To discuss electrical circuits, we need two fundamental concepts, the voltage, which we've talked about plenty, and the current, which we need to define now. So let me introduce first the circuit symbol for a battery, which is like this. It looks a lot like the circuit symbol for a capacitor, which we've seen in a previous lecture. That looks like this. The battery looks sim similar, but the two bars are of differing lengths. The longer bar is the positive terminal of the battery. The shorter bar is the negative terminal. But usually we don't indicate those signs. Uh, we just show the, the two bars. The battery acts like a pump for charge. And we'll talk more in detail about models for the battery uh, in a later lecture. But now let's consider a fairly simple circuit where I'm going to take a battery and connect the two ends of it to a metal bar. So here's a metal bar. And the battery is simply going to pump charge around and around this circuit continuously. And so if I Imagine watching the charges go past a particular point. The current, and we use the symbol I, is defined to be the charge passing a particular point, like this point in our circuit. So these are wires connecting to the bar. So we're sort of looking into a wire and counting the charge that passes by. The charge passing a point per second. Mathematically, I could say that I is equal to the limit as a time interval approaches zero of the amount of charge delta Q passing this point divided by the time delta T. That, of course, is a complicated way of writing the derivative of the charge as a function of time. So that gives us the equation that I is defined to be the derivative of charge with respect to time. Very fundamental, very important. So that is a two star memorized box. Now let's apply this idea to a capacitor. Let's say I've got a capacitor here that is initially uncharged and I flow some current I, so some charges per second flowing in on the left side, and I'm going to take the same current I out of the right side. So as time goes on, I'm going to start to build up some positive charge on the left plate and some negative charge on the right plate. I'm adding more charge with this current, I'm taking away positive charges with this current, leaving behind negative charge. Now, if I enclose the capacitor inside of a box so that I can't see inside. I see current going into the left side of the box and coming out of the right side of the box. So it looks as though the current is going through the capacitor. So it looks as though I goes through the capacitor. Even though there is never any charge that actually goes across this gap between the two capacitor plates. From the outside, it behaves as if the current is going through the capacitor as the capacitor charges up. So we will talk about current going through capacitors, even though there is no actual current moving from one side of the capacitor to, to the other. There's no charge moving across this gap. It still looks like there is current going through it as seen from the outside world.